Hello guys, welcome to this lecture. Before we begin this lecture, please make sure you subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. I hope that you are enjoying your stay at home and also practicing these questions. Now one thing or one advice I would love to give to I would love to give to each and every one of us is while you are um taking these questions online please try and practice them yourself don't just copy it is not all about getting good grades but now without further ado let's dive into the business of the day now we have a question here the question says if alpha and beta are the roots of the equation if alpha and beta are the roots of the equation now the equation given to you is the equation given to you is you have 2x squared minus 2s minus 1 is equal to 0 if alpha and beta are the roots of this equation find alpha square plus beta square and so on and so forth now first of all this part of a quadratic equation is called symmetric functions of root. It's called what? It's called the symmetric functions of root. Now, two roots are said to be symmetric if alpha plus beta will give you beta plus alpha. That is, if you add the two roots together, whichever direction you add them, they will give you if you add it in the opposite direction. It also means that alpha beta should be able to give you what? Beta alpha. That's what the symmetric functions of root is all about. Now, in this quadratic equation, if you compare with the general form of quadratic equation, what is the general form of quadratic equation? The general form is AS square plus BS plus C is equal to zero. If you compare this with the general form of the equation, you agree with me that your A here is equal to 2 your b here is equal to what where's your b minus 2 negative 2 and your c is negative 1. now we need to express or we need to get two things that are paramount to understanding or to solve equations under symmetric functions of root and that is alpha plus beta which is given as minus b over a and then alpha beta which is given as c over a so whenever you are given any equation like this and they say you should find alpha plus beta what you do is find b and then a and use this expression to find the value of alpha plus beta are we clear on that so if alpha and beta are the roots of this equation we've already gotten our a we've gotten our b i've gotten our c now we are now going to look for alpha plus beta we said alpha plus beta is equals to what minus b all over a so our alpha plus beta will be equals to what is our b is minus 2 so we have minus bracket minus 2 what is our a our a is also 2 so this cancels this you have 1 minus that is minus is plus so our alpha plus beta is equal to one now the next thing that we are going to consider is alpha beta what will be our alpha beta now alpha beta is c all over a alpha beta is what c all over a now what is our c here our c is minus one so minus 1 all over our a is what 2 so our alpha beta is minus 1 over 2 now each of these values given to you are manipulated in such a way that they have in them the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta now what do i mean by that if you look at alpha square plus beta square it is expressed as now please take note you have to study this before you actually have an understanding of it but for the meantime you should just memorize it alpha square plus beta square is represented as alpha plus beta 
square minus 2 alpha beta. Are we clear on that? So wherever you see alpha square plus beta square, what are you expected to put? Alpha plus beta squared minus 2 alpha beta. That is the expression for alpha square plus beta square. Like I said, each of these ones here given are written in such a way that alpha plus beta and alpha beta are embedded in them. So our alpha square plus beta square now, we now have the value of what is alpha plus beta as calculated here. We said our alpha plus beta is 1, so we have 1 square minus. Now what is, then we have 2 bracket, what is our alpha beta? Our alpha beta is minus half. Our alpha beta is what? Minus half. Our alpha beta is what? Minus half. So what is this going to give to us? This will give us alpha square plus beta square is equals to 1 square is 1. Then we now have minus 2 times 1 is plus 2 all over 2. Are we getting in now? And this cancels this. This will give us 1. So alpha square plus beta square is equals to what? 1 plus 1 is 2. So our alpha square plus beta square is equal to 2. Our alpha square plus beta square is equal to 2. Are we getting it now? Now the next case that we are going to take is alpha minus beta. Now alpha minus beta is expressed as alpha minus beta is expressed as the square root. Like I said, you have to memorize this of alpha plus beta squared minus 4 alpha beta. The square root of alpha plus beta square minus 4 alpha beta. Now, what is our alpha plus beta? Our alpha plus beta is 1. And our alpha beta is what? Minus 1 all over 2. Now, substituting into this equation, what are we going to have? Now, let's take it gently. If you substitute into this equation, you're going to have alpha minus beta is equal to the square root of alpha plus beta is 1. So, we have 1 square minus 4 times alpha beta is minus half. Are we getting it now? At this point in time, what can we do? So, we say alpha minus beta is equal to the square root 1 square is 1, then 2 divided by 4 here is 2, minus 2 times minus 1 is what? Plus 2. And this gives us alpha minus beta as the square root of 1 plus 2 is 3. Square root of 3. Now, let's look at the next one. The next one says alpha square minus beta square. Now, alpha square minus beta square is equal to of course, you agree with me that this is difference of 2 square. And difference of 2 square, if you have a square minus b square, according to difference of 2 square, this will be a minus b, bracket what? a plus b. If you multiply these two together, they are going to give you this. Are we getting it? So, alpha square plus beta square, we also follow same, which is difference of 2 square. So, this will be alpha minus beta bracket and then alpha plus beta alpha minus beta bracket open and close alpha plus beta now what is our value for alpha minus beta alpha minus beta is minus um square root of three rather then times what is our alpha beta alpha plus beta rather alpha plus beta is one so we can say that our alpha square minus beta square is equals to square root of 3 times 1 will give us the square root of 3. Square root of 3 times 1 will give us the square root of 3. So our alpha square minus beta square is still the same thing as the square root of 3. Are we getting it now? That is how to go about it. Now let's take the next one. The next one says 1 over alpha plus 1 all over beta. Now, if we take this 1 over alpha plus 1 all over beta. Now, what is the LCM here? LCM of alpha and beta is what? Alpha, beta. Now, alpha divided by, alpha, beta divided by alpha, you'll be left with beta here. 
plus alpha beta divided by beta, you'll be left with what? Alpha. So if you want to rearrange this, this gives us alpha plus beta all over alpha beta. So we can say that 1 all over alpha plus 1 all over beta is equals to alpha plus beta divided by alpha beta. Now alpha plus beta is 1 and alpha beta is minus 1 all over 2. Now this gives us 1 divided by minus 1 all over 2. Now if this, if this division sign here should change to multiplication, what are we going to have? If it changes to multiplication, you have multiply here, then these two will come up and the minus one will come down. So we are going to have uh, uh, two all over minus one. One times two divided by minus one will give us minus two. So we can say that uh, one over alpha plus one all over beta is equal to minus two. It's equal to minus two. And that is the solution to this question so if you are given any question like this the first thing you need to do is to find alpha plus beta which is expressed as minus b all over a and then find alpha beta which is expressed as c all over a haven't gotten your a from the equation your b from the equation and your c from the equation you substitute in to get your value for alpha plus beta and alpha beta and then manipulate each of these ones in such a way that you'll be able to pick alpha plus beta at an alpha beta okay and that is the solution to that now let's look at the next question the next question says if f of s now f of x given as s raised to the power of 3 plus 3 s squared minus 2s plus 5 what are the remainder or what are the remainders rather when f of s is divided by x minus 1 now the first one is the first one is x minus 1 now the remainder theorem is that in which if you want to look for the remainder when this divide is all you just need to do is equate this equal to 0 Whatever I give it to you, equate it equal to zero and then substitute it in. Anything that it gives to you is the word remainder. Are we getting it now? So applying that now, this becomes x minus 1 is equal to zero. What will be your x? S is equal to 1. So substitute 1 now into this equation. Anything it gives to you is your value for your uh, remainder. So this becomes f of s will be equal to, here will be 1 square plus then we have 3 bracket 1 this is 1 raised to the power of 3 rather then 3 bracket 1 square minus 2 bracket 1 plus 5 and this will give us 1 raised to the power of 3 is 1 plus 3 1 raised to 1 square is 1 times 3 is 3 minus 2 times 1 is 2 and then plus 5 are we getting it now 3 minus 2 is 1. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 5. And 1 plus 1 plus 5 will give us 7. So the remainder, when s minus 1 divides this, will be what? 7. Will be 7. Now that is for the first case. Now the second case is you have s cubed plus 3s squared minus 2x plus 5. Now what will be the remainder? If s plus 2 divides this. Now, for the, from the remainder's theorem, we said s plus 2 will be equal to 0. So, x will be equal to, take 2 to this side becomes minus 2. At this point in time, what do we now do? We now substitute minus 2 into this equation. So, this will give to us, wherever we see s, we put minus 2. So, this gives us minus 2 raised to the power of 3 plus 3 bracket minus 2 square minus 2 bracket minus 2 plus 5. Anything it gives to us remaining is the remainder. So minus 2 raised to the power of 3 is minus 8 plus 3 times minus 2 square is 4. Minus 2 minus 2 is plus 4 and then plus 5. And this gives us minus 8. 3 plus 4 is 3 times 4 rather is 12. 4 plus 5 is 9. 
and then we have minus 8 plus 9 which will give us 1 plus 12 is equals to what 13 so the remainder when 13 or when s plus 2 divides the uh what we have here the remainder is what 13 are we getting it now now let's continue with the next one the next one says 3s plus 1 what do we have as our values initially the um dividend that is what is being divided we have s cube plus c plus or negative plus 3s square minus 2s 3s square minus 2s plus 5 I believe that's what we have s cube plus 3s square minus 2s plus 5. now we have 3s plus 1 if it is divided by 3s plus 1 which is equals to 0. now according to the remainder's theorem what we need to do is equate this equal to 0. so this gives us 3s if this one crosses to this side it gives us what minus 1. now divide both sides by 3. So 3 cancels 3, x will be minus 1 all over 3. Now, have we got to minus 1 all over 3? What do you think that we can do in this case now? Substitute minus 1 all over 3 into this equation. Now, the equation initially is s raised to the power of 3 plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now, if s is equal to minus 1 all over 3, this becomes minus 1 all over 3 then raised to the power of 3 plus 3 brackets minus 1 all over 3 squared minus 2 bracket minus 1 all over 3 plus 5. Now this will give us minus 1 raised to the power of 3 is minus 1 divided by 3 to the power of 3 is 27 plus 3 brackets minus 1 square is 1 divided by 3 square is 9 minus now minus 2 times minus 1 is what plus 2 all over 3 plus 5 are we clear on that now the next step that we are going to take now is bring everything out and then we can find a denominator numerator and do the rest algebra so this gives us minus 1 all over 27 plus 3 times 1 is 3 divided by 9 plus 2 divided by 3 plus 5 then let's say this over 1 now what is the lcm of everything here the lcm is 27 so you say 27 27 divided by 27 is 1 1 times minus 1 is 1 plus 27 divided by 9 is 3 3 times 3 is 9 plus 27 divided by 3 is 9 9 times 2 is 18 27 divided by 1 is 1, uh, 27 times 5 is 135 now if you add everything here together it's going to give us 161 divided by 27 why because 135 plus 18 will give us 154. 154 plus, um, okay, this will give us 153. 153 plus 9 will give us 162. 162 minus 1 will give us 161 divided by 27. Now, when you come to fractions like this, this cannot be the remainder. The remainder is usually what is in the numerator. Are we getting it now? So the remainder in this case is what? 161. Please note now when you have a fraction, the remainder is usually what is in the numerator. The remainder is what? Usually what is in the numerator. So in this case, the remainder is 161. Now let's try the next. The next is 3x minus 2. 3x minus 2. What will be the remainder? for that case 3s minus 2 given that we have s cube s cube plus 3s square minus 2s plus 5 i believe that's what we have s cube plus 3s square min okay s cube plus 3s square minus 2s plus 5 now 
divided by 3x plus 2. What do you think the remainder will be in this case? 3s minus 2, rather. 3s minus 2. What will be the remainder? So, first of all, we equate this equal to 0, right? And this becomes 3s is equal to 2 because when this crosses to this side, it gives you 2. And then divide both sides by 3. So, 3 divided by 3, your x is equal to 2 all over 3. Now, in place of x, what do you do? Substitute substitute x equal to 2 over 3 into the dividend. Now, the dividend is what you are dividing. Are you getting it? Dividend is this, what you are dividing. So, substituting it in, what are we going to have? You have... You have 2 over 3, or let's rewrite it out. This is s raised to the power of 3 plus 3s squared minus 2s plus 5. So in place of s, you put 2 over 3. So this gives us 2 over 3 raised to the power of 3 plus 3 bracket 2 over 3 squared minus 2 bracket 2 over 3 plus 5 and this gives us 2 over 3 raised to the power of 3 2 raised to the power of 3 is what is 8 divided by 3 raised to the power of 3 is what 27 plus 3 bracket 2 to the power of 2 is 4 and of course 2 to the power i mean 3 to the power of 2 is 9 bracket minus 2 bracket 2 all over 3 plus 5 and this gives us 8 over 27 plus 3 times 4 is 12 all over 9 minus 2 times 2 is 4 all over 3 plus 5 and this will now give us all over 1 what is the SEM here of course you know is 27 27 divided by 27 is 1 1 times 8 is 8 27 divided by 9 is 3 times this is 36. Minus 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 times 4 is another 36. Plus 27 divided by 1 is 27 times 5 is 135. Of course, you know 36 here, we cancel 36. So what are we left with? We are left with 8 plus 135 divided by 27. 8 plus 135 is 143 divided by 27. Of course, I told you that whenever you have something like this, the remainder is usually what is in the numerator. The remainder is usually what is in the numerator. The remainder is usually what is in the numerator. So what is in the numerator in this case now is what? 143. So the remainder is 143. Remainder is 143. Okay, you understand? Are we getting it now? So that is how to go about determining the remainder when the dividend is given using the remainder's theorem. Now, of course, we can also apply the long division method, but that is a long approach. Are we getting it now? So we leave it like this. Now, you are given an, another equation. Solve the following equation. Now, this is trigonometric equation. Now, the question says solve the following equation. The equation given to you is 3 cos square theta plus 2 cos theta minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, whenever you are given an equation like this, it's very difficult for you to solve it like this. Now, what is the usefulness or why do you think we solve mathematics? It is to look for ways that we can actually break it down and make it simpler than the initial way it was given. Same tallies with real life problem. What we do is look at the problem and then profile solution, look for ways to reduce it to the minimal way or the simplest way available. That is the essence of mathematics. Are we getting it now? And that is what we are going to be doing. Now, if we should say, let's approach this question the way it is like this, it may prove very difficult to provide solution to. So what do we do? We can say let cos theta be equals to x. 
Now, if cos theta is equal to s, wherever we see cos theta, what do we put? We put x. Now, do you know that these three cos square theta can also be written as three cos theta then square? Yes, that is true. Then plus two cos what? Theta minus two is equal to zero. Now, in this case, wherever we see x, or wherever we see theta, cos theta, we are going to put x. So this gives us 3. Uh, in place of theta, we are going to put x. 3s squared, in place of cos theta, rather, we are going to put x. Plus 2, we have cos theta here, so we we'll put x. Minus 2 is equal to 0. And this gives us 3s squared plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, this is not a quadratic equation. This is what? A quadratic equation. Now, this quadratic equation, do you think that we can uh, solve it or factorize it? Now, it's very difficult for us to factorize the quadratic equation. So, let's take it to the other side of the board and see if we can factorize it here. You have 3s squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0. I believe that is what it is. Minus 2x, rather, minus 2s. I mean, plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, how do we solve this equation? Let's use the uh, quadratic formula, which is minus b plus minus the square root of b square minus 4ac all over 2a to solve. Now, in this case, comparing our a will be 3, this is a, our b will be 2, and of course, everyone knows that our c will be what? Minus 2. So, putting in those values now into this equation, you have x is equal to minus 2, place of b put 2, plus minus the square root of 2 square minus 4, bracket 3, bracket minus 2, then divided by 2 bracket 3. And x will be equal to minus 2 plus minus the square root. 2 square is 4. Then 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times minus 2 and this minus here will give us what? Positive uh, 12 here. Okay? Positive 24 rather because 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is what? 24. So here gives us positive 24 divided by 2 times 3 is 6. And at this point, we now have x is minus 2 plus minus the square root. 4 plus 24 is 28. Every two here divided by 6. Let me write it here. x is minus 2 plus minus the square root of 28 divided by 6. And this will give us x is equal to minus 2 plus minus the square root of 28 is what? Let's try together. The square root of 28 is square root of 28 is 5.29. 5.29 divided by 6. So this can also be expressed as minus 2 plus 5.29 divided by 6 or minus 2 minus 5.29 divided by 6. And then x will be 3.29 divided by 6 or minus 7.29 divided by 6. Now, at this point in time, what do you think we can do? We can say our x will be equal to when 3.29 divides 6. What is it going to give to us? 3.29 divided by 6 is going to give us 0 0.548. Or when 7.29 divides 6 is going to give us minus 1.215. Now, but note that we are dealing with angles here, theta. Hence, the only value that we are going to take is the positive. Negative does not surface in what angles. Are we getting it now? 
So taking the positive value will now come here and then say that our x is equal to what do we have? Our x is equal to 0 0.548. Our s is equal to 0 0.548. Our s is equal to 0 0.548. Are we getting it? That's our s, 0 0.548. Now, remember, remember that cos theta is equal to x. Remember that cos theta is equal to x. Now, therefore, cos theta will be equal to, where's our s? 0 0.548. What will not be theta? Theta will be the cos inverse. To get theta, it will be the cos inverse of 0 0.548. And theta will be equal to. So we now press shift cos 0 .5, 0 0.548. And that will give us 56.770. So that is our theta. Now this is a specific, uh, uh, specific uh, value. If it's a general value, now plus 360n, but forget about that. Just know that your theta is equals to 56.77 degree. Your theta is what? 56.77 degree. Now let's look at the next one. The next one says sine s is equals to 2 cos s. Sin s is equals to 2 cos s. Let's try that one together in a different board. Sin s is equals to 2 cos s. Now, what do we do in this case? First of all, we need to make 2 stand on its own and then look for another way to represent this thing. So, divide both sides by cos theta. Divide both sides by cos x, rather, this is not theta, this is s. So this gives us sine x is equal to 2 cos x divided by what? Cos x, and this will be divided by cos x. Cos s cancels cos s, so we have sine x all over cos s is equal to 2. Now, note that tan s is equal to sine x all over cos x. This is the trigonometry identity. So, wherever we see sine s over cos s, what are we going to put there? Tan x. So, tan s is equal to 2. Now, what will be the x? s will now be the tan inverse of what? 2. And s will be tan inverse of 2 is tan inverse shifts tan 2. That is what you press your calculator. Shift tan 2 gives us 63.43. And that is our answer to that question. In degrees. In degrees. 63.43 in degrees. You can convert it to radian. But for this case, let's leave it in degrees. Are we getting it now? So that is the solution to that question. Now let's attempt to solve the next the next question says, show that n bracket n minus arrow is equals to n bracket what? Arrow. Now, this bracket you see here, this big bracket you see here means what? Combination. Are we getting it? So, we can also write this as n combination n minus arrow is equal to n combination arrow. Now, Combination, if I have n combination arrow, it means n factorial all over n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial. That's the meaning. So, n combination arrow means what? n factorial all over n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial. So, if I give you 5 combination 2, let me write it up so that we will not bog this piece I want to prove in. If I give you, let's say, n combination or 5 combination 3, what does it mean? It means you write 5 factorial 
all over 5 minus 3 factorial, then 3 factorial. Same thing is applicable here. So, n combination n minus arrow means what? n factorial all over. Look at what I'm going to do now. Now, you can liken your 5 to your n. So, what are we going to write again? 5, right? So, I'm going to write n again. Minus, and then your n minus 3 as your 3. Or n minus arrow as your 3 here. n minus arrow is like your 3 here. So, I'll now say bracket what? n minus what? Arrow. Then, in big brackets, we can now say factorial. Then, we now write 3 again. What is 3 in this case? n minus arrow. So, you now say n minus arrow factorial again. Everything equals to, we say n combination arrow. This one means what? n factorial all over n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial. Now, that is the meaning of everything here. It's as easy as ABC. Write what you have on top. Write this, what you have on top, minus what you have here, then put factorial. Write what you have here again, and then put factorial. Same thing applicable here. Write what you have on top. Write what you have on top, minus arrow, or what you have under factorial. Then write this one factorial again. Now, this will now give us n factorial all over. n minus n is what? Zero. If we use this n to open through, you have n minus n. Minus times minus is what? Min R plus arrow factorial. Then you now have n minus arrow factorial equals to n factorial all over n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial. Now n can cancel n. So what are we left with here? We have n factorial all over n n is no longer there. This cancel this gives you zero. Zero plus arrow is arrow. So we have arrow factorial bracket n minus arrow factorial equals to n factorial bracket n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial. Now if you rearrange this, you see that it's equals to this. So n factorial all over n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial is equals to n factorial all over n minus arrow factorial arrow factorial and that is the solution to that question okay that's the solution to that question now let's look at the next i believe you should take a look at it again it's very easy now let's look at the next question the next question says divide this by this and indicate the quotient. Now, we are going to use the long division method, which is something you must have learned in your KG2. The long division method. You have here as what? S cubed plus 3S square minus X. Are we getting it? Minus X. This cannot be equal to 1. This cannot be equal to. Now, this is plus 1, not equal to. So, we have plus 1. Divide by what? X minus 2. Now, according to the long division method, what do you do? Divide this by this. Anything gives you to multiply through again. So, x divided by s raised to the power of 3 to give us what? s square. Or s raised to the power of 3 divided by s will give us s square. Now, I'm not going to use this s square to multiply x again and everything here. So, this will now give us s square times s is what? s to the power of 3. s square times minus 2 will give us minus 2 s square. Now, to cancel out, what do we do? We subtract. When you subtract, what will happen? This will cancel this out. So here will be what? Zero. Now, plus, minus times minus is what? Plus. So here becomes 3s squared plus 2s squared will give us what? Plus 5s squared. You bring this one down, minus x plus 1. Long division, primary 2. So everything here is what? 5s squared minus s plus 1. Now, the next one is, use this s to divide this 5s squared. Or 5x squared divided by x will give us what? Plus 5x. 5s times 5x will give us what? 5s times x rather will give us 5s squared. 5s times minus 2 will give us minus 10x. And then when we come here again, we subtract. This cancels this. You have minus s minus minus 10s. 
minus minus 10s means minus x plus 10s. Minus x plus 10s is what? 9x. So everything there gives you 9x. And then you bring this one down again, plus 1. Okay? Now, what are we going to do now? X divided by 9s will give us plus 9. Are we getting it now? 9s divided by s will give us 9. 9 times x will give us 9s. So, if we may take this one down here, the continuation, this 9s plus 1. Say 9 times s will give us 9x. Are we getting it now? Then 9 times minus 2 will give us minus 18. What do we do here? We subtract. So, this minus this is 0. 1 times minus this is what? Plus 19. So, finally, your remainder is what? 19. Remainder is 19. Now, the question is indicate the quotient. Now, the quotient is what you got after dividing. So, this is the quotient. Are we getting it? This is the quotient. So, you can say here, quotient is equal to s square plus 5s plus 9. That is the quotient. Indicate the remainder. The remainder is 19. Remainder is what is remaining after you divide, which a constant term here is what? 19. The next one says the divisor. The divisor is what divides it. So we have divisor is x minus 2. And this one here is what is called the dividend. Dividend. So this one is divisor. So that is how you indicate it. Are we getting it now? Now, let's try remainder theorem and see if remainder theorem will also give us 19. Now, according to remainder theorem, what do we have? We have s cubed plus what? 3s squared minus s plus 1. I think we should try this on a fresh sheet. We have s cube plus 3s square minus s plus 1. So we have minus s plus 1. Now, if this one is divided by what we have here, x minus 2. What will be the remainder? Now, s minus 2 will be equal to 0. So, s will be equal to what? 2. Now, let's substitute s equals to 2 into this equation. What is it going to give to us? It's going to give us 2 raised to the power of 3 plus 3 bracket 2 square minus 2 plus 1. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 plus what? 3 bracket 4 minus 2 plus 1 is what? Minus 1. And this gives us 8 plus 3 times this is what? 12 plus 1. Oh, sorry, minus 1. 8 plus 12 is 20 minus 1. 20 minus 1 is what? 19. So if you use the long division method, it gave us 19. And if you also use the remainder theorem, it also gave us 19. And that is how to solve that question. Okay? Let's try the next. The next question says, find the tenth term from this. Now, whenever you are given anything like this, use this formula. Use n combination arrow p raised to the power of x then q raised to the power of n minus x where n is the power here in this case your n is what 20 are you getting this now n is the power so n is 20 now your arrow is the term so n combination s rather your s is the term the term you are asked to find this will say find the tenth term so the term here is what 10 then your p is your first thing here which is one so in this case p is one and then your q is the second one here q is what minus 2 s so in this case q is equal to minus 2 x now substituting in what do we have we have 20 combination 10 then what is your p times 1 raised to the power of x times what is your q is minus 2 sorry 1 raised to the power of uh, 10 are we getting it because s is 10 
So we have 10 minus 2 x to the power of what? n minus s. What is your n? 20. What is your s? Is what? 10. So this gives us 20 combination 10 times 1 to the power of 10 is 1. Then times minus 2x to the power of 20 minus 10 is 10. So 20 combination 10 is, you can press your calculator, 20 combination 20 combination 10. That will give us 184756 times. Now, you use this 10 to open through the bracket. You now have brackets. Please put bracket minus 2 raised to the power of 10. And this will give us 1024 times then x to the power of 10 is what? x to the power of 10. Now, if you multiply 1024 1, times what do you have there? 184756. Now, this will give us 1891901444 s to the power of 10. So, this is the 10th term. This is the what? The 10th term. And this is how to solve an equation like this. It's as easy as ABC. That is the 10th term. Are we getting it now? So, whenever they give you a specific term to find, you use this equation. Okay? This is the 10th term. Now, let's continue. You are asked to write down the Pascal coefficient of everything you have here. Now, the Pascal triangle. Let's draw out the Pascal triangle. The Pascal triangle, you have it as 1. Then you have 1, 1. Then this is, you add these two together. 1 plus 1 is 2. Then it ends with 1 again. You start with 1 again. You add this to 1 plus 2 is what? 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then it ends with 1 again. Are you getting it now? The next one will be 1. 1 times 4. 1 plus 3 is what? 4. 3 plus 3 is what? 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. We are done with this one. You end with 1 again. The next one is 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 plus 1 is 5. And this is 1. Then we have 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. 5 plus 10 is 15. 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 plus 5 is what? 15. And this plus this is 6. And then finally end with 1. And that of 7 will be 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. There we have 6 plus 1. 6 plus 15 is 21. 15 plus 20 is 35. 15 plus 20 is another 35. Then we have 15 plus 6 is 21. 6 plus 1 is 7. And this is what? 1. So this is how to generate the Pascal's triangle. This is how to generate the Pascal triangle. So the Pascal coefficient for x raised to the power of 6 will be all the values here. Are we getting it now? The Pascal coefficient for x to the power of 6 will be all the values there. Why the Pascal coefficient for s is equal to 7 will be these other values here. Are we getting it now? So that is that for that question. Now, let's write them out. You have 1, 6, 15, 20. Let's write them out here. So, this is for A. We have 1, 6, 15, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6. Then we have 20, 15, 6, and 1 again. I believe that is it. Yes, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1 again. Now, when you have anything like this, this one you have here, you now write each of these things inside. You now say this is times, what do you have here? 1. Are you getting it? And then times what? X. Each of them plus, you add it together. For you to expand, you now have times 1 times X plus, this one is times 1. 
sorry, times 1 times x plus times 1 times x plus times 1 times x plus times 1 times x and then plus times 1 times x. Now, the highest power you have here is what? 6. When one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. So, for the first case, you are going to write it as here will be raised to the power of 6, here will be 0. Then here will be what? 5, here will be 1. Here will be 4, here will be 2. This one will be 3, here will be 3. Here will be 2. Here will be 4, here will be 1, here will be 5, and finally, here will be 0, and here will be 6. Are we getting it now? So at the end of the day, what are we going to have? We are going to have 1, 1 times 1 raised to the power of 6 is what? 1. Then times s raised to the power of 0 is what? 1. So everything here will give us 1. So we have 1 plus, now 1 plus, times on 1 raised to the power of 5 is 1 times 6 will give us 6 then s to the power of 1 is x plus we then have 15 1 to the power of 4 is 1 times 15 is 15 then we have s square so we have s square plus the next one is 20 1 raised to the power of 3 is 1 times 20 is 20 then we have s to the power of 3 plus 15 1 to the power of 2 is 1 s to the power of 4 is s to the power of 4 plus the next one is 6 1 to the power of 1 is 1 times s to the power of 5 is s to the power of 5 and then finally we have plus 1 to the power of 0 is 1 1 times s raised to the power of 6 is s raised to the power of 6 so these are when you expand this equation this is what you are going to have and this is the uh, pascal coefficients all these values here 1 6 15 20 15 16 and like that are we getting it now so i will advise you that you write down these values and also write down the expanded form of it exactly the expanded form the values are 1 6 15 20 15 6 and 1 pascal coefficient then the expanded form of it will give you this now, the next one is 1 plus s raised to the power of 7. Now, to the power of 7 is 1, 7, 2, 1, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. So, let's take it again. 1, 7. So, this gives us 1, 7, 2, 1, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. Those are the Pascal coefficients for that case. Now, you are going to do it the same way again. So, this gives us 1, 7, 21, 35, 21, 7, and 1. So, this one is 1, S raised to the power of 7, Sorry, 1 raised to the power of 7, s raised to the power of 0. Then this will be 1 raised to the power of 6 times s to the power of 1 plus 1 to the power of 5, s to the power of 2. Then this will be what? Times 1 to the power of 4, s to the power of 3 plus 21 1 to the power of 3 s to the power of 2 sorry s to the power of 4 plus this one will be am i forgetting anyone here basically you just do it and you get your answer are we getting it? but these are the pascal coefficients that you are asked to write out are you getting it if you want to try that you can try that at all now, you have another question that says, solve the following and give the range of values of B and C. Now, the first one given to you is the absolute value of 2x minus 3 
equal to 7. Now, when you talk about absolute value, what do we mean? Now, if they say, what is the absolute value of minus 5? It's equals to 5. The absolute value of 5 is also equals to 5. Now, can you see any resemblance or anything here? Now, the absolute value is telling you that no matter what the values are, whether they are negative or they are positive, whenever you put these two lines here, it's telling you that the values must appear as positive. So, if I have minus A, what will be the absolute value of minus A? This will be what? A. Because the absolute value must be positive, whether it is negative or positive. Now, let us solve this question using the idea of absolute value. Now, what you normally do is, since we know that the absolute values can either be a positive value or a negative value, what we do is, instead of writing this is equal to 7, we can come here and say minus 7 is also equal to 2x minus 3. And this is also equals to 7. Why did we write it like that? Because we say the absolute value can be positive or what? Negative. So if they give you only the positive, you have to introduce the negative inside. Now, how do we solve this equation? We solve it by first of all, picking one of the values or one of the sides of the equation and then solving that part first. So picking this part, we have minus 7 is equals to 2x minus 3. Now, if minus 3 comes to this side, what are you going to have? You have minus 7 plus 3 is equal to 2x. Minus 7 plus 3 is 4 is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2. So, to get x, if s cancels this, your x, or if 2 cancels that, your s will be equal to 2. Now, the next we are going to take now is the other part of the equation, which is this part. Now, if we should take this part of this equation, we are going to have 2x minus 3 is equal to 7. Now, take this minus 3 to this side. What are we going to have? We have 2x is equal to 7. Negative 3 crosses to this side becomes positive 3. And this will give us 2x is equal to 7 plus 3 is 10. Divide both sides by 2. 2 cancels 2. Your x is equal to 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So your values are s is equal to 2 and what? And x is equal to 5. Now let's see the other case. The other case is s minus 5 is less than 9. s minus 5 is less than 9. Now if s minus 5 is less than 9, let's take it absolute value of s minus 5 less than 9. Now, using that same idea, it means that minus 9 is less than x minus 5, which is less than 9. Because we said that 9 is like the absolute value can be positive and it can be negative. So, we have to introduce the negative part of it since only the positive was given. Now, picking one side of the equation and solving, we have minus 9, taking this side first, this way, we have minus 9 is less than x minus 5. Take minus 5 to this side, becomes minus 9 plus 5 is less than x. And minus 9 plus 5 will give us what? Minus 4 is less than x. So minus 4 is less than s is the first part of the equation. Now the second part is, we are going to take s minus 5 is less than 9. Now, minus 9 crosses to this side. What will it become? Minus 5, rather, crosses to this side. It becomes x is equal to 9 plus 5. And x will be equal to 9 plus 5 is 14. So, this is not equal to this less than. Okay? Let's take note. Less than. So, we see that minus 14 is less than x. And x, or minus 4 is less than x and s is less than 14. Minus 4 is less than s and s is less than 14. Now, if you represent this in a number line, let's say this is point 0 and this point here is minus 4 and here is 14. When they say minus 4 is less than s, it means that s is greater than minus 4, but it is less than 14. So, it means that the range of value would be all values 
from minus 4 down to 14. So we can say minus 4, excluding minus 4, because s is greater than minus 4, then to what? To 14. Are you getting it now? So these are the values. Or you can write it as minus 14 to 0 or minus 4 to 0 union then 0 to what? To 14 with 0 included in each of them. So if you want to put included, you use this big bracket like this. So this is the range of values. Are we getting it? If we have minus 4 is less than s, it means s is greater than what? Minus 4. S is greater than minus 4 means every value like minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1. But x is less than 14. It means x may end at 13.99 or for real numbers, it will end at 13. Are we getting it now? So that is what you have to do in this case. So minus 4, less than x, and s less than 14 is your range of values, which you can write like this. Now the next case is 15 minus 2 over s is less than 1. So let's write that one down. 15 minus 2 over s is less than 1. So what would this one be? 1 minus 1 is less than 15 minus 2 over s which is also less than 1. And this will become 1 minus 1 less than, if we take one side first, minus 2 over x. Now, this will be over 1. Where is the LCM here? Become minus 1 is less than. LCM of x and s is what? Is s. So we have s divided by s is what? s times 15 is what? 15x minus s divided by s here is 1 times 2 is 2. So this becomes, if you come here, cross multiply, s times minus s, we give up minus s is less than 15s minus 2. And then what do you think we can do in this case? Let's take minus 2 to this side and then take, um, okay? Let's take minus 2 to this side and then take this one this way. So this will become positive 2. This is not less than or equal to, please take note. Positive 2 is less than 15x. If this one crosses to this side, becomes positive x. And this will be 2 is less than 15s plus s is what? 16s. Divide both sides by 16. This cancels this. So we can say that 2 over 16 is less than s. And this will be 1 all over 8 is less than what? X. Now, the next case is 15 minus 2 over S is less than 1. So we come here and say 15 minus 2 over X less than 1. Now, what is the LCM here? It's also X. So we have X divided by 1 is X times 15 S is 15 X. X divided by S is 1 times this is minus 2 less than 1. And this will give us the cross multiply s times 1 is s so we have 15 x minus 2 is less than 1 now this gives us 15 x less than 1 if this crosses to this side become plus 1 then 15 s less than 3 okay 15 s less than 3 are you sure are you sure we are not making any mistake let's check again let's check again Okay, we're making a mistake here. 
this value here 15 minus 2 this here is s times 1 will give us s are we getting it so if we go by that this will be 15s minus 2 is less than s now if this crosses to this side what is it going to give to us it's going to give us 15x minus s less than 2 okay now 15s minus s is 14s is less than 2 divide both sides by 14 your x will be less than 2 here 1 2 here 7 so 1 all over 7 so our interval is 1 over 8 is less than x and then s is less than 1 all over 7 so you can put that here comma 1 all over 7 and that is the range of value so that is basically how to solve problem like this thank you for your time please make sure you subscribe turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified whenever i post a new video thanks bye bye